Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, today, lecture, we will talk about the Fitzboro Sleep Quality Index, the short form is CSQI. Uh, and this presentation, I will cover about the overview, a short overview about the PSQI and the way on the scoring, scoring method of PSQI. Mostly the people uh, or the or the people know about the way of scoring just the, the one way, like greater than five and less than five, the good, uh, good sleep and less sleep. But in this presentation, we'll call the three way of scoring. Like for example, if we have a small sample size, then how can we uh, score uh, this? And for example, if we have a large sample size, uh, how can we score them? the Pittsburgh sleep quality index, or if we are using it in a clinical setting or in a clinical population of the sleep or as a sleep therapist or a psychotherapist or any any therapist which are who are dealing with uh, sleep and with the participant or the patient having sleeping problems. So uh, stay uh, here with me and, and in the last part we will cover about the handling of uh, missing data. How can we handle the missing like for example if uh, we have any missing data then how can we deal with this? Uh, now, coming toward uh, the first part, is uh, we know that uh, the Pittsburgh Sleep Quality Index is a type of questionnaire that is used for measuring the sleep quality. As you, if you are using this questionnaire, so I'm sure you know what is the sleep quality is. So I'm not going into too much detail about uh, this, about the sleep quality. So now coming to the sleep quality questionnaire. So it is developed by, by a researcher at the University of Pittsburgh. Okay, and uh, it's the periodic quality index that consists of 19 items. Okay, that generate seven components, uh, component scores, each reflect a different aspect of sleep. Okay, the seven components are, these seven components are, the one is the subjective sleep quality, the second one is the sleep uh, latency, the third one is the sleep duration, and the fourth one is habitual sleep efficacy, sleep disturbance, use of sleep medication, and daytime dysfunction. So these are the components of the questionnaire. Now each component are scored on the scale of zero to three. Okay, this is the general guideline with three indicating the greatest dysfunction. The component score are then summed to get the global score, which range from zero to 21. Okay, the higher score indicate worse sleep quality. So this is the main interpretation for the scoring. Now coming toward the scoring, as you know that if you have the questionnaire in your hand, so you will see they have, uh, they have uh, around nine questions. For example, question number one, question two, question three, and then question four. Question four have two parts, A and B. Then question five have again 10 parts. It has a uh, start from A to J, to, 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 to J. So it has a different subcomponent. Then we have question four, or the six, then seven, eight, and nine. Okay, if you know the question, so there is nine questions, so then you can uh, then then you can uh, get about the component. For the component one, so it is already this is already present in the questionnaire, so you can get it from the when you download the questionnaire, the PDF form, so you will also get this at the bottom of the questionnaire. So for the component one, it's this questionnaire is basically divided into seven components. Okay, for the quest, uh, component one, you have to write the score from question number nine. Okay, just the third or just directly from the question number nine, you have right to here to uh, component one score. Okay, for the question number two, you have to sum the question number, uh, the score from question uh, number two to end uh, the question number five A. So when you get the score from two and five A, you write here to the component uh, to C2. Okay, this is your C2 uh, raw score. Okay. For the component number three, the raw score is obtained from question number four directly straight forward. There is no need for the other question to submit to, to sum. Okay, for the for the component four, the the total score is actually it is from the four uh, A and and four B. Okay, the score is from four A and four B. Actually, it is the four B the value obtained from the four B divided by a value obtained from four A. So it is because the total number of hour asleep divided by total hour uh, of uh, total number of hours in bed, so multiply by 100. So you will get a percentage. If you get the percentage, it is around 85%. So the 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 the, uh, the final value will be zero. If it is 75 to 84, so it is one. Then if it is 65 to 74, so it is two. If it is less than 65, so it is three. So you can write it here in the component number C4 scoring. And for the component number five, the score will be obtained from the summing the score, like taking the mean or sum of the score from 5B to 5J. When you sum them, 
and you get the score of, of maximum of at uh, 27 and minimum minimum of zero if the score is zero so it will be considered as zero if it is one to nine so it will be considered as one and if it's 10 to 18 it will be considered as two if it is from 19 to 27 so it will be considered as three for the component number five score Okay, so this is like the the the, the constant. So it, it is it is by the questionnaire. So it's not need to worry about. So you have to uh, it's already mentioned on the questionnaire. For the component six, so you have to uh, take a value from question number seven. Uh, sorry, question number six. And for the component seven, you have to take a value from summing the score of question number seven and question number eight. When you sum it, and the when the value is zero, so it is zero. If it is one to two, so it is one. And this will be categorized, it will, it will be like a round of one. If it is three to four, so it will be round of two. If it is five to six, so it will be the final value will be three. So you can write it in the component seven. So the final part is add all together from the component one plus two plus three plus four plus five and plus seven. And then you will get the global PSQI score. When you get the PSQI score, now here is the method of scoring or interpretation. The first one is the quantitative method. For quantitative method, if you have a small sample size, just like 30 or 40 participants, and you want to interpret it, so you will use the quantitative scoring method. And this type of method, that transfer the seven uh, raw score into the global score, okay? The second one is, and interpretation is the higher the global score, the worse is the sleep quality, okay? The lower score reflect better sleep quality, okay? Uh, and the clinical significance is like the global PSQI score of five or higher has been associated with a clinically significant sleep disturbance. So this is like the quantitative method is the same as we mostly use in our in our settings. Like if the score is less than five, so it is a good quality. If it is more than five, it is a good. Uh, it is a poor sleep quality. Okay, so he has a disturbed sleeping. This is for the quantitative scoring. Now comes to the categorical scoring. So if you have a very large sample size, around 50 or 60 or very uh, 500 or 600 participants or a very large area, and you want to just for your research, you want to do a sleep quality of, uh, uh, the sleep quality of a population. So it is best to use the categorical uh, scoring. Okay, the PSQI can be used to uh, can be used to categorize individual and to different sleep quality groups. Okay, the first step is transfer the raw score to the global score. Okay, this is the first uh, uh, group, uh, first uh, step. Okay, and then the second step is like when you transfer it and you get the score of uh, of the of the glo global score. Based on the global score, you categorize the participant on the good sleeper and the poor sleeper. If the score of the participant is zero to four, so it is considered as a good sleeper. If it is a score of five or higher, so they can be categorized as a, as a, mm, a poor sleeper, okay? So you can do this uh, uh, option in the SPSS, or you, you can write the group one will be the, for example, the good sleeper, uh, the, the good sleeper, and group two will be the poor sleeper. So they can be, they can give you the data uh, or the chart or the file chart according to the, according to this data you put, you, you put on them. So it is mostly good for the large sample size, uh, for large sample size. So you can get a clear picture of uh, percentage of the good sleeper and percentage of the of the poor sleeper. Now, uh, method number three is the clinical setting or individual scoring. Okay, for example, if you are a sleep therapist or you are a psychotherapist and you are dealing with the patients who have the sleep problem or sleep uh, issues, so it is the best that you follow this uh, pro, uh, this uh, method. Okay, and this type of method is like actually. And consider the seven common score individually. Okay, you have to uh, uh, you have to do and analyze the each score, like for each each component scores, and interpret it, and then write it down so that you can make an, an individualized uh, treatment protocol for the for the uh, for the patients. Okay, for example, if the patient uh, want to measure the subjective sleep quality, you will, uh, for example, one scale. Uh, on a scale of zero to three, with three being the worst, how would you rate your overall sleep quality during the first month? And then will you answer this question, okay? And the participant will respond like this. A participant might answer with a score of two, okay? Indicating a moderate sleep quality. Or for the sleep latency, for example, you will ask the participant or the patient is how long and minutes does it usually take you to fall asleep after you get into the bed? 
okay so the response might be a participant might report the sleep latency of uh, around 30 minutes okay so he will tell you after 30 minutes i am in bed i, I fall asleep so you have to not eat each down uh, for each component like this you have you can read it by yourself so the main thing i want to uh, convey from this type of method is it is by examining these individual components or you can get inside into the specific area of sleep that can be problematic for an individual okay this approach allows for more new uh, nuanced understanding of the factors contribute to overall sleep quality okay which can be valuable when uh, when when uh, making intervention or treatment to address specific sleep difficult difficulties Whenever the patient have problem in the latency and the falling asleep or the other component is okay so you have to make a treatment plan that mostly that specifically address the sleep latency or for example if they have any issues with the sleeping medications so you have to address the area that is mostly a treatment plan that can address the, the, the medication issues so it is very good for the for the especially the clinical the clinicians or the doctors that are dealing with a patient who have sleeping problems now handling the missing data if you are for example if you are doing a survey and you this because it is the self reported questionnaire so the participant of the patient can do by themselves so if the participant doing their own and by any mistake or if they don't understand some a part of the question they skip it so how can you deal with this type of uh, questionnaire or this type of data the missing uh, data so there is few methods that we mostly address in the statistics so the first one is mean substitutions okay approach replace missing value with the mean score of the completed responses for that specific component okay for example if the participant we did not provide a response for sleep duration okay if you didn't respond for sleep duration your missing value might be replaced with the mean sleep duration of the participant who did not who sorry who did provide a response for this for that component for example if you have 10 participants and one participant didn't respond to uh, sleep uh, for example sleep duration so you will sum or take a mean of this nine participants and the mean value will be taken uh, as a uh, as a sleep duration uh, for only for the sleep duration component or the sleep duration of the participant who didn't answer so this is the mean substitutions uh, for the uh, missing for for missing the data okay the second uh, the second method is like a person mean or subscale mean imputation okay we, uh, for, in this approach, we follow like replace missing value with the participant mean score or the mean score of the subscale. Okay, mean of all sleep latency value for missing sleep latency data. Okay, okay you will take the sleep latency uh, component and take a mean, and this will be taken as a value for the missing data and the sleep latency come for the sleep latency component. Okay. For example, the participant who are missing data for sleep duration, their missing value could be replaced with their own sleep duration based on their response to other components. Okay, if the, for example, if the sleep duration have one question, so you can uh, take uh, according to the mean from the other component from the other response. You can take from the other uh, from the other questions like there is a um, seven component, so you can take a. Uh, the, the value for the duration from the uh, based on the value of other components okay now the third one which is mostly used in the statistic and it is very valid because the first two it is a bit blind so mostly statisticians don't uh, follow that one so this is like because here you follow specific statistical test is a multiple imputation approach it is like we generate a multiple set of imputed values each representing a possible value for the missing data okay analyze each step separately and then combine the result okay consideration it is the multiple imputation is more sophisticated methods that account for uncertainty and the imputed value it is generally preferred when dealing with the missing data because here you analyze it using a specialized statistical test so that's why it is more uh, preferable in the research setting uh, when dealing with the uh, missing data for IP and uh, missing clinical activity questionnaire. Sorry, uh, uh, preserve uh, sleep quality index. So before, uh, this is a small note, before uh, when you're dealing with the missing data, using the method, it's essential to consider the nature and the extent of the missing data. Okay, the assumption underlining each imputed method and the potential impact on the validity of the result. Okay, additionally, research should transparently report 
how missing data was handled in their analysis. When you're writing the analysis and the and the and the results section, you should also uh, write write it down how I uh, handled my missing data because it's very important so the viewers can understand it. So this is all about the sleep uh, also uh, sleep quality index uh, questionnaire and uh, I hope you learn it because I cover most part of the pedagogy quality and text coding that most of the uh, of the of the people don't uh, cover actually and uh, thank you so much for listening and I hope you enjoy it so please like share and subscribe to the channel thank you so much